Thank you for checking out this no spoilers movie review. This is for The Vault of Horror. It's a 1973 film, and it's basically an anthology film, which there really aren't that many anthology films coming out anymore, and I think it's kind of a lost art. Um, I know there's never been like a huge influx of them throughout time, but um, I think we need more. I think we need more, and uh, I think this one's executed pretty well. Um, by the way, it's currently streaming on the Shutter streaming service when I'm doing this review. Um, and one of the things I really like is when you have one of these anthology films, when the overarching story, kind of putting all these stories together into one, makes sense. And I feel like in this film, it actually makes sense. They did a pretty good job of tying it all together. So not really spoilers, because it happens immediately, and it's kind of implied by the poster art and in the description of it, that uh, the guys, they're a bunch of guys coming together, they're in the vault of a basement, and they're all telling these reoccurring nightmares that they keep having. They, they're telling these stories to each other. And those are the small stories uh, in, the, in this anthology. So immediately, though, I think it's really cool how um, they show up in this vault, and there's this really awesome camera shot from top down, and it's like this polygon shape that they're in. And you see all the guys kind of walking around the table, which, by the way, oh, why is my... Sorry, my lighting got weird. Um, which, by the way, the table is like stock full of booze. And that's one of the big, the big things in this film overall, is there's booze pretty heavily featured, whether, which I think is just kind of like a thing for the 70s, especially. This is a British film, so like in, in Britain, it's kind of like people had nightcaps all the time. And it's an, yeah, actually, it's not really just in like Britain. Uh, if you watch like the old Invasion of the Body Snatchers, um, people are drinking all the time in that. Everyone's like, oh, time for a nightcap. Hey, how about we have a drink? Like, it's, it was way more of a socially accepted thing, and it shows up quite a bit in this film. But yeah, that camera angle of, like, the top down looks so good in the beginning, and it's just a really cool way to kind of start things. The other thing that really grabbed me at the very beginning of this film is I was like, whoa, Tom Baker. If people don't know who Tom Baker is, he is he was one of the doctors for Doctor Who. I don't really watch a whole lot of Doctor Who. I know there are a lot of people out there who are nuts about it. My dad used to watch Doctor Who, and Tom Baker was his doctor. He always said he was the best Doctor Who ever, and uh, so I just knew Tom Baker as Doctor Who when I was growing up, so I kind of have an affinity for the guy. Plus, he is quite a good actor, and I will say he by far was the best actor in The Vault of Horror. I mean, he really shone on that screen. Every time he was on it, he was kind of stealing it, and uh, I just wanted to see more of him in it, so... It was really cool to see Tom Baker in it. I think he was the fourth Doctor for Doctor Who. But you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. But, um, yeah, so the director who made this film, his name is Roy Ward Baker. So the film, some of the films he's known for, he did Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. He did The Vampire Lovers, and he did Quartermass and The Pit. Uh, the, one of the writers, there were two main writers for this, uh, Al Feldstein, he did some stories for the 1970s uh, Tales from the Crypt movie, as well as a writer, William Gaines, who also did some of the, some of the story for that movie, but he also did it, uh, a bunch of episodes for the, um, Tales from the Crypt TV show, so very tied in and you see like the tie-in with this film because at one point one of the characters is reading a book and the book is tales from the crypt so it's like there's the nod um yeah the really cool above the room shot okay so i'm gonna go over the 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 five individual stories and that's the thing they had five stories and and the interesting thing is like the very last one i believe was the longest by far it was actually my favorite one and I forget which, like the fourth one, I think it was, was actually pretty brief. So the, the run times on the, you know, on the, the different stories are very dis disparate. Uh, so the first story was fun overall, but the, one of my problems with it, it was very, very easy to see where things were going. It was also kind of like over the top, uh, kind of like almost, it was over the top acting to a point where it made it kind of comedic. And not comedic in, like, an awesome way, but, I, but like, nowadays you can kind of look at it and be like, oh, I can laugh at that. But, you know, it's not scary at all. You can see where things are going, but it has kind of, like, a fun air to it. So it's pretty solid. Um, but I wrote down that it actually, actually ends up being a little bit cartoonish. But the fact that 
this is supposed to be someone's reoccurring nightmare. It kind of makes sense. Like, I was watching it, I'm like, eh, this seems a little, uh, but then I was like, oh, well, it's supposed to be this dude's nightmare, so I guess it kind of makes sense because, you know, people's dreams, people's nightmares, they don't always seem real. They can seem, like, over the top, and that kind of happens in this. So the second story had this, like, overly comedic English guy in it, which I found funny, but a little bit distracting from the actual story. That one, I think, was the least serious. It was a more like, oh, this is kind of ridiculous. Sometimes in intentionally, it seemed, and sometimes unintentionally. Um, so yeah, this guy is like over-the-top comedically English. He, he, he talks like this, and he, uh, well, that was a terrible accent, but he's very over-the-top like that, and he's got like a I mean, I have a bit of a gap between my two front teeth, but think about this times like 10. He's got like a huge gap between his front teeth, and he's kind of like that funny um, gap-toothed English dude who's very high society, and he was even wearing like an ascot, which was just like, oh my gosh, it's too much. But it's funny. Like, I, I found some, some interest in that. Um, the series events, uh, The series of events in this one are actually over the top actually do a point of kind of hyperbole and I was actually laughing at it because there's a series of things that happen where you're just like the that series of things just cannot just happen like boom 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 it, it's it's so over the top but then once again like I was saying like these are nightmares you know it's not it's not like real um you do pretty easily see where it's going once again much like in the first story uh but there's some extra stuff in it to make it like more interesting and funny and in particular the very end the very very end has something that's that you don't really see coming that's a kind of cool touch where you're just like oh that's pretty cool that's that's like uh, very horror and i didn't see it coming and i like that uh the third story was actually pretty refreshing because this is the first one that takes a different setting uh it, it's a different country i think it's in india is where it's supposed to be, so they kind of change the music up, they change up the scenery, some of the actors, so it's not just like straight English, and uh, this is the first of the th stories that seems fresh, you know, it, it, it's a much different idea, it's more original seeming, and I really enjo enjoyed that the most as I was going through it, I hit one, two, three, and I was like, oh, now three, th the third one is the one that I'm really interested in. Um, there's something the main character does in this, though, that makes no logical sense. But then, like I was saying, nightmare. But if you watch this, see if you can catch that where you're just like, that would that person would not do that. It, it's it's this, this crazy jump from point A to point B where you're like, no, no, no. I don't think they would travel from here to here. I think they'd travel from here to here to here. It, it's Trust me. Um the other thing is they use slow motion in this in this one, and the slow motion looks awful. But I also see the point of it because there there have been plenty of nightmares I've had where you you feel like you're running away from something and um, you just can't move fast enough. So I guess maybe that's what it was supposed to be playing on. But in the context of just watching it as a film, it looks terrible. It does not work at all. The slow motion just seems dumb and. You're just like, what are we doing here? Like, why? So that's just kind of like a little bit of problem. So the fourth story uh, is kind of more of like a normal setting, like back in England, I assume. It doesn't really specify. But this one has some slapstick in it that seems really out of place that I didn't enjoy at all because it's, it's a very serious tone. And then it gets to a certain point where it, it's kind of too late to inject any sort of comedy. And then they do. And on top of that, it's like the worst type of comedy to just randomly inject, which is slapstick. And I was just kind of like, okay, this does not, that's not working for me at all. So it was, it was weak. Like overall, the fourth story was by far my least favorite. I, I didn't like it. It was super weak. The premise was not all that original. I mean, it was okay, but overall, not a fan of that one. Then we have the fifth story, which I did say in the beginning, this was my favorite one by far. This is the one that featured Tom Baker, and I didn't just love it because of Tom Baker, although I, you know, as I've been saying, you can tell I really like Tom Baker. Um, this one also had a different setting. This had a, like, really nice, cool, relaxed island setting, at least in the beginning, and then it, it kind of changes settings later. 
but uh, the scenery in this one is really cool and it keeps you engaged. Um, and it's um, it's a good time. Uh, it, it, it's by far the most original of all five of the stories, which is one of the reasons I think I really liked it. Um, do, 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 uh, it has, oh, the other thing is it, it has a lot of anticipation in it. it, has good tension building, you're anticipating a lot of things, and they use drums, like drum music, tribal, like, drum music, uh, to really good effect in this to kind of help build tension and, and help you feel, like, the anticipation of, like, something's coming, like, what's gonna happen next, um, so that was really nice, too, uh, so yeah, so that one was my favorite by far. Uh, all the stories in general, they have this kind of air of, of extravagance to a sense. It, I don't know if that's quite the right word. It's more of like a high society feel to it. And um, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of weird in that sense. But it's kinda, it kind of works at the same time. I don't know. It's just like all the guys are like well-to-do in a way. So just an observation. Uh, the other thing is you can tell that the, this film is firmly placed in the 1970s. It looks very, very 70s, except for the ones where it's like in India or it's in um, like like a, an island uh, setting. The ones that are actually like set in England, you can tell it's very 70s, especially in uh, like restaurant establishments or people's houses, stuff like that. Um, and the other thing is you really have to just remember this is the 70s when you're watching it. As far as the acting goes, acting has come a very long way <laughs> since the 70s. And uh, just keep that in mind because there's some stuff that's really not well acted. It's over the top or it's just falls short and you're like, ooh, this person can't really act. Except Tom Baker, like I was saying, did a great job. So two of the stories takes take place in the other countries like I was talking about. Um, so this kind of plays to like the idea that shows up in horror from time to time of like exotic areas and unknown cultures, which is kind of this extra um, aspect of mystery and fear because, you know, the fear of things you're not very familiar with, the fear of things that are foreign. Um, it, it has like an air of xenophobia to it, which is a very real thing. Um, but I feel like in older film, it was, it was used a lot more, at least a lot more than, than is being used now. Like xenophobia was like it, kind of its own mode of horror. I mean, think about things like, um, I guess the only prime example I can think of off the top of my head is like the serpent and the rainbow, you know, having to do with like voodoo. Like that's a very like xenophobic type horror. So it kind of harkens back to that type of stuff. Um, like I said, they did a, they did a pretty good job of like tying all the stories together. I enjoyed that. And, uh, yeah, I just, I guess the last thing I wrote down is that I want more of these types of films. I like these, just a bunch of little vignettes that are tied together and it's a good time. Overall, the directing was good. It wasn't like anything amazing to write home about. Cinematography was good. I told you the acting was spotty, uh, for the most part, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's a fun film. It's good to check out, especially if you like anthologies and you like films from the 70s that look very 70s. Uh, this one could be for you. Like I said, it's on Shutter currently. So uh, going with my rating for this one uh, out of five stars with halves in play, I'm going to give it a firm three stars. It is better than halfway for me. I think I would recommend just checking it out if you have any sort of interest. I enjoyed it. So uh, thank you so much for checking this out. Please do me a favor, hit that subscribe. It really can help me out in the long run because I'm looking to get more interest, get more interaction with people, which also reminds me, put some comments down there. Have you seen this film? Do you want to see this film? What are your thoughts? Um, and just, you know, talk about horror in general. You can give me some likes if you want, but the big thing is the subscribe. I would appreciate that. Anyway, thank you for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.